Samuel chapter 8 Israel demands a king When Samuel became old he made his sons judges over Israel The name of his first born son was Joel and the name of his second Abijah They were judges in Beersheba Yet his sons did not walk in his ways but turned aside after gain They took bribes and perverted justice Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him Behold you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways Now appoint for us a king to govern us like all the nations But the thing displeased Samuel when they said Give us a king to govern us And Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel Hearken to their voice of the people in all that they say to you for they have not rejected you but they have rejected me from being king over them according to all the deeds which they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt even to this day forsaking me and serving other gods so they are also doing to you now then hear come to their voice only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them so samuel told all the words of the lord to the people who were asking a king from him he said these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you he will take your sons and appoint them to his chariot and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots and he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of 50 and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the implements and the equipments of his chariots he will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers he will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his servants he will take the tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and to his servants he will take your men servants and maid servants and the best of your cattle and your asses and put them to his work he will take the tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves and in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves but the lord will not answer you in that day israel's request for a king granted but the people refused to listen to the voice of samuel and they said no but we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles and when samuel had heard all the words of the people he repeated them in the ears of the lord and the lord said to samuel hear come to the voice and make them a king samuel then said to the men of israel go every man to his city samuel chapter 9 saul chosen to be king there was a man of benjamin whose name was kish the son of pai son of zero son of pekorit son of afia a benjaminite a man of wealth and he had a son whose name was saul a handsome young man there was not a man among the people of israel more handsome than he from his shoulders upward he was taller than any of the people now the asses of kish 
Saul's father, were lost. So Kish said to Saul, his son, Take one of the servants with you and arise. Go and look for the asses. And they passed through the hill country of Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha. But they did not find them. And they passed through the land of Shalim, but they were not there. Then they passed through the land of Benjamin, but did not find them. When they came to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant, who was with him, Come, let us go back, lest my father cease to care about the asses and become anxious about us. But he said to him, Behold, there is a man of God in this city, and he is a man that is held in honor. All that he says comes true. Let us go there. Perhaps he can tell us about the journey on which we have to set. Then Saul said to his servant, But if we go, what can we bring to the man? For the bread in our sack is gone, and there is no present to bring to the man of God. What have we? The servant answered Saul again, Here I have with me the fourth part of a shekel of silver, and I will give it to the man of God to tell us our way. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he said, Come, let us go to the sea. For he who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. And Saul said to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went to the city where the man of God was. As they went up the hill to the city, they met young maidens coming out to draw water and said to them, Is the seer here? They answered, He is. Behold, he is just ahead of you. Make haste, he has come just now to the city. Because the people have a sacrifice today on the high place. As soon as you enter the city, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat till he comes, since he must bless the sacrifice. Afterward, those eat who are invited. Now go up, for you will meet him immediately. So they went up to the city. As they were entering the city, they saw Samuel coming out towards them on his way up to the high place. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince over my people Israel. He shall save my people from the hand of Philistines, for I have seen the affliction of my people, because their cry has come to me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall rule over my people. Then Saul approached Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, where is the house of the seer? Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for today you shall eat with me. And in the morning I will let you go and will tell you all that is on your mind. As for your asses that were lost three days ago, do not set your mind on them, for they have been found. And for whom is all that is desirable in Israel? Is it not for you and for all your father's house? Saul answered, Am I not a Benjaminite from the least of the tribes of Israel? And is not my family the humblest of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Why then have you spoken to me in 
his way. Then Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the hall and gave them a place at the head of those who had been invited, who were about thirty persons. And Samuel said to the cook, Bring the portion I gave you, of which I said to you, put it aside. So the cook took up the leg and the upper portion and set them before Saul. And Samuel said, See, what was kept is set before you. Eat, because it was kept for you until the hour appointed, that you might eat with the guests. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. And when they came down from the high place into the city, a bed was spread for Saul upon the roof, and he lay down to sleep. Then at, at the break of dawn, Samuel called to Saul upon the roof, Up, that I may send you on your way. So Saul arose, and both he and Samuel went out to the street. Samuel anoints Saul. As they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant, pass on before us, and when he has passed on, stop here yourself for a while, that I may make known to you the word of God. Samuel chapter 10 Then Samuel took a vial of oil, and poured it on his head, and kissed him, and said, Has not the Lord anointed you to be prince over his people Israel? And you shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you will save them from the hand of their enemies round about. And this shall be the sign to you that the Lord has anointed you to be prince over his heritage. When you depart from me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Selzah, and they will say to you, the asses which you went to seek are found, and now your father has ceased to care about the asses and is anxious about you, saying, What shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on from there further and come to the oak of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there, one carrying three kids, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from their hand. After that, you shall come to Jibet Elohim, where there is a garrison of Philistines. And there, as you come to the city, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the high place with harp, tambourine, flute and lyre before them. Prophesy. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come mightily upon you and you shall prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Now when these signs meet you, do water, whatever your hand finds to do. For God is with you, and you shall go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I am coming to you to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait until I come to you and show you what you shall do. <laughs> Saul prophesies. When he turned his back to leave Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all these signs came to pass that day. When they came to Jibba, behold, a band of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came mightily upon him, and he prophesied among them. And when all who knew him before saw how he prophesied with the prophets, the people said to one another, 
what has come over the son of Kish. This Saul, also among the prophets, and the man of the place answered, And who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, This Saul, also among the prophets. When he had finished prophesying, he came to the high place. Saul's uncle said to him and to his servant, Where did you go? And he said, To seek the asses. And when we saw they were not to be found, we went to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Pray, tell me what Samuel said to you. And Saul said to his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses has been found. But about the matter of the kingdom of which Samuel had spoken, he did not tell him anything. Saul proclaimed king. Now Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mizpah, and he said to the people of Israel, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all the kingdoms that were oppressing you. But you have this day rejected your God who saves you from all your calamities and your distresses. And you have said, No, but set a king over us. Now therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. Then Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. He brought the tribe of Benjamin nearby its families, and the family of Metrites was taken by Lot. Finally, he brought the family of the Metrites near man by man, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken by Lot. But when they sought him, he could not be found, so they inquired again of the Lord, Did the man come hither? And the Lord said, Behold, he has hidden himself among the baggage. Then they ran and fetched him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, Do you see him whom the Lord has chosen? There is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted, Long live the king. Then Samuel told the people the rights and duties of the kingship, and he wrote them in a book and laid it up before the Lord. Then Samuel sent all the people away, each one to his home. Saul also went to his home at Gibeah, and with him went men of valor whose hearts God had touched. But some worthless fellows said, How can this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no present. But he held his peace. Samuel chapter 11 Saul defeats the Ammonites. Then Nahash the Ammonite went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to Nahash, Make a treaty with us, and we will serve you. But Nahash, the Ammonite, said to them, On this condition I will make a treaty with you, that I gorge out all your right eyes, and thus put disgrace upon all Israel. The elders of Jabesh said to him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers through all the territory of Israel. Then if there is no one to save us, we will give ourselves up to you. When the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul, they reported the matter in the ears of the people, and all the people wept aloud. Now Saul was coming from the field behind the oxen, and Saul said, What ails the people? that they are weeping. 
So they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came mightily upon Saul when he heard these words, and his anger was greatly kindled. He took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces, and sent them throughout all the territory of Israel by the hand of messengers, saying, Whoever does not come out of the Saul and Samuel, so shall it be done to his oxen. Then the dread of the Lord fell upon all the people, and they came out as one man. When he mustered them at Bezek, the men of Israel were three hundred thousand, and the men of Judah thirty thousand. And they said to the messengers who had come, Thus shall you say to the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow, by the time the sun is hot, you shall have deliverance. When the messengers came and told the men of Jabesh, they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will give ourselves to you, and you may do to us whatever seems good to you. And on the morrow Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the camp in the morning, watch and cut down the Ammonites until the heat of the day. And those who survived were scattered, so that no two of them were left together. Then the people said to Samuel, Who is it that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men, and we may put them to death. But Saul said, Not a man shall be put to death this day, for today the Lord has wrought deliverance in Israel. Then Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingdom. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed peace offerings before the Lord, and there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly.